Okay, we've been talking about lots of saving. Now let's buy some stuff. So what if we wanted to buy a car? How does it work? Okay, well, first of all, right, you walk in, you pick out your car that you want that are so much money now. Oh my goodness. And then you look at that interest rate. That interest rate is a huge deal for, for your car and how long you finance it. So we're going to look at some examples of that. So when I go and I get a loan, it's called an installment loan. A lot of times it's just called a car loan, but an installment loan is where you pay a monthly fee for the installment of the loan. Now that cars are more money, the loans are being extended even longer. Um, when I was younger, five years was considered extremely long. And so now they'll do 84 months or seven years. So you're paying on a car and think about the shape that car will be in in seven years, you know, like, uh, I don't know, it's just, it just makes me go, Rrr. so um, just the price of them. When we look at this formula, this is our formula for any payment. So we're going to do this for houses as well. So this is any kind of payment. And this is a compounded interest payment. So your interest is gaining interest on its interest and in, um, you're paying interest and it's changing the value of um, how much you owe each month based off your payment and your interest and stuff. So this formula takes all of that into consideration. P is still like our um, starting amount. That's our cost of the car. So this might help you with this is our cost of the car um, right here, right? Everything else should look very similar, except it's one minus in the denominator instead of after um, on the annuity, that regular payment for the annuity. So let's go down here and use this formula. Example one, suppose you decide to borrow 20,000 for a new car. It's not new, uh, new to you, <laughs> used. Have you guys looked at prices? I bought a new car last weekend, very expensive. You can select one of the following loans. Installment loan A, three years at 7%. Installment loan B, five years at 9%. So we're going to look at these two. Um, find the monthly payment for loan A. So our, our monthly payment for loan A is going to be our P, our starting amount, 20000 times the rate. We said this one is 7%. And we're doing monthly payments, which is pretty typical. So that's our numerator. Our denominator is going to go one minus one plus the rate again, divided by that 12. Sorry to write that a little bit to the side. Minus, so a negative in the exponent, um, 12 times time. How many years? Three-year loan. Okay, so here's our loan payment amount. Now... This is an exponent here, so be careful. Now, when you go to put something in the exponent, you need to use this negative right here, okay? The, not in the, in the exponent place. So when I put this in, I don't think I have a key for this. Oh, maybe I do. Um, so I'm gonna put it, I'll put one into my calculator, otherwise it's, you can't see it anyway. Divided by the 12 in the parentheses. I usually put in the numerator, push enter, get that answer, and then push divide. So I'm dividing that answer by that whole second thing, um, which will be one minus parenthesis one plus 0 0.07 divided by 12 to the power of using a parenthesis up in that exponent, negative 12 times three in that and in my main parenthesis. And I get $617 and 54 cents, that's kind of a high payment. You will pay it off in three years though. So that's kind of how I typed it in. I know it's kind of weird. So I don't know if that's gonna work real well to see, but okay. So find the monthly payments for B. So the only thing that changes for B is that rate and the time. So we still are looking at a $20,000 loan, but this time it's, nine percent and it's one minus one plus 0 0.09 divided by 12 to the power of the negative 12 times five years so that one's five years 
okay, I'm going to put this in and I get $415.17. Oh. Would be nice if I wasn't sick the first couple weeks of this class while I'm making all my videos. Oh, well. Okay. I mean, I feel fine. I feel somewhat okay, but I can't get my sinuses to feel okay. So look at this. Why would I pick B over A just without looking at interest and all that parts? Because my payment is so much less. $200 a month. That's like food for a couple weeks, right? That's pretty good. So let's look at the second part here. Compare the monthly payments and total interest. So we just compared the monthly payments. Let's look at that total interest. So the first one, I'm going to pay $617.54 every single month for three years. So remember, it's P times T times N, and you can multiply them in the order. Sorry, I switched the T and the N that time. Okay, so then let's calculate that out. So $617.54. And 54 cents. I'm going to times that by 12 and then three, and I get $22,231.44. So my interest for loan A is going to be 2231.44 minus 20,000. Okay. So that's going to give me $2,231.44. Now let's look at loan B. Loan B, I pay $415.17 um, for five years every month, right? Five is your years, N, your compounds is 12. So 415 times 17 times 5 times 12. It, doesn't, it looks like a minus. That's a times, okay? Um, I get $24,910.20. So loan A, I mean, excuse me, which I can't write today. Loan B is going to be the 2,4,9,10,20 minus the 20,000 that you, the cost of the car. So I'm paying $4,910.20. So in the long run, I am paying way more money. Um, I mean, a couple thousand dollars more for the car. Um, gosh, 5,000 in interest. That just seems high. It is. All right. So why would I pick B though? Even though in the long run, I pay a lot more money. That might be the only payment I can afford every month. So usually the shorter you go on your time, the better the rate because they don't have to finance you as long. You pay it off sooner. The longer you go, the worse the rate. <clears throat> Okay, so the next part talks about leasing. What is leasing? Well, it's basically renting a car. And when you lease a car, if you cause any damage, you're going to have to get charged extra money. And the advantages are like, I mean, it lists a bunch. The advantages really are usually you can get lease a car for a lot less money, um, but you're never going to own it. So you're always going to have payments. Okay, at the end of the lease, you could do a buyout, but um, you can look through these. I don't need to read each of these, but um, leasing is just an option. Look through that if you're interested. I know usually you can get a lease for a pretty low price though. So that's why people do it, but don't let your kids eat in the back, right? They'll be trash in no time. Okay, auto insurance. So we have a couple things with auto insurance. And a lot of people just don't understand. When you get insurance and you get liability, you have to have liability. Okay, there's two parts. Bodily injury liability. This covers the cost of lawsuits if someone's injured or killed in an accident and you are at fault. So bodily liability insurance is required. Property damage liability covers damage to other cars. So when I say liability insurance, I have both of these to people's body and car if I'm at fault, if I cause the wreck, okay? Um, if I get 
full coverage, it's going to include uh, collision coverage. So then it pays the damage of, uh, of your car as well. And comprehensive coverage protects your car from theft, falling objects, acts of nature, collision with an animal. Gosh darn it, so many deers out here. So full coverage includes all of these. Now these really, so what's confusing me right now? This dot should be out here, okay? <laughs> They're all equal. They shouldn't be indented. I think that just happened when I brought this up in Notability. These are all equal. So when you get liability, you have to have that. When you get full coverage, it adds the other two on there for you, okay? All right, so suppose that you're thinking about buying a car and you've narrowed it down to two choices. A new car costs 25,000, it's financed for four years at 7.9%. A used car option is a three-year-old model, same car, costs 14,000, it will be financed for four years at 8.45%. What's the difference in monthly payments between the financing your two cars? So. This is just another, um, one more problem with our payment formula, right? So option number one. So this is our new car. Okay, and our new car bum, 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 is 25,000, right? 25,000, it's the cost of the car times our rate, what was our rate? 7.9, so 0 0.079 monthly right all divided by um one minus the parenthesis one plus the 0 0.079 divided by 12 to the power of a negative 12 times four years okay take the time calculate that out i get 609 oops i wrote the wrong number 609 and 15 cents. Make sure you can do that on your calculator. Okay, then we have our used car, right? Our used car was a lot less money. It was $14,000. And this one's at eight, so 0 0.0845 divided by 12, all divided by one minus one plus 0 0.0845 divided by 12 to the power of negative 12. This was, what was our years on this one? Four-year loan. Oh, they're both four-year loans. Four-year, yeah, cool. That makes it easier to compare. So this one will be $344.75. Wow, that's such a difference. Are you gonna buy new or used? Oof. And we could calculate out the interest on this one. You pay a lot less interest, obviously, if you buy the used car that's less money because um, you're paying interest on more amounts on the top one. So these are both four years, so very comparable. Now the rates really are higher for used cars. Um, I just bought a new Honda and they had a deal if you only finance four years, you could get 1.9% interest, which is extremely low right now. And, and this video might be watched at a different time. And, Right now it's 2022. So, um, you know, in 2023, if you're watching this video, the rates might have gone back down, but right now they're kind of high. So you're probably getting eight to 10% on a car loan, which puts you in a very high interest category. All right, so the other money pit of car ownership, right, is gas. Um, gas tends to cost quite a bit. Um, this totally, looks weird let's rewrite that but this is basically your annual um, miles driven divided by miles per gallon and you can times it by the price per gallon mm. I can't fit it over there, price per gallon. So whatever the price of gas is right now. So that's just your co annual cost of gas. So we can look at this, um, this little chart from your book's a little old. Um, it talks about a small sedan being like cost about 44 cents 
45 cents per gallon. And so the cost per year you can figure out is a lot more for an SUV. This doesn't consider like hybrid or a lot of our electric cars coming in, okay? We should know these things. We should know about maintenance, how much tires are gonna cost, um, oil changes, um, tolls, parking fees, cleaning fees, all those things kind of add up. Insurance, license fee, registration, taxes. Um, so you have to pay taxes on your car price too. So a couple more questions. Suppose that you drive 24,000 miles per year and gas averages $4 per gallon. What will you save in annual fuel expenses by owning a hybrid car that averages 50 miles per gallon rather than this SUV that offers 12 miles per gallon? So what's the cost difference on these? So let's look at our hybrid or SUV, I don't really care which one. SUV, oops, SUV, let's talked about first, it doesn't matter. So our SUV is 24,000 miles is what they say we drive and we get 12 miles per gallon and the average cost is about $4 right now per gallon. So this is trying to be as realistic as I can. Um, 12 miles per gallon might be a little low, like my SUV gets um, 25. So let's see, so that's $2,000 a year in gas. Okay, your hybrid, how much is it gonna be per year in gas is 2,400 um, divided by 50, because I get 50 miles per gallon, still saying, you know, the four. Um, this will end up being, Did I divide it by 12? Oh, shoot. I was like, what did I do wrong? I forgot to times by four over here. It's 2,000 times four. It's 8,000. I was like, that doesn't look right. 2,000 a year. That's what happens when I don't really look close. Okay, so for this other one, you, you get 480 when you divide by 50, but then you have to times it by four. So this one's 1,920. So I was like, they're both around 2,000. That's not correct. I'll write this better, it's $8,000. You probably already saw that mistake, but either way. Okay, so one is gonna cost us 8,000 a year to, to use. Just, you know, that we aren't even talking maintenance, we're just talking about using it, okay? If you deposit your monthly fuel savings at the end of each month into an annuity that pays 7.3% compounded monthly, what would be your um, cost? Let me get my annuity formula. Okay, so how much money am I saving by, you know, so I got to figure out per month. So I'm going to take 1920 and divide by 12, because this is per year up there. And that's going to give me $160. And then I'm going to take 8,000 and divide it by 12 to get how much per month. And I get $666.67. See, that's a little high. I don't quite pay that much. But I guess our truck was that much, though. We got about 10 to 12 miles per gallon on our truck. So if you drive a big truck. Okay, then I'm going to subtract these two. 0.67 minus 160, and I get $506.67. So I'm going to take this difference every single month, and I'm going to put it into an annuity. So I'm going to put this money as my payment, right? And it's A equals, and then I'm going to times that by one plus, oh, it should be that in parentheses, one plus our rate that they said was 7.3. So 0 0.073, move your decimal two places, divided by 12 to the power of 12 times six years. So that's about when most people buy a new car, minus one, right? All divided by this rate, divided by the 12. Okay, so I put this in an annuity. I would actually have $45,604.48. So why would I show this? I just showed you the difference between buying 
I mean, not buying, saving money on gas by buying a car that gets better gas mileage. And really, you don't even have to get a hybrid, like a Corolla, a Civic. Um, they used to have Geo Metros. Now I get uh, uh, some of the Hondas. They get 40 to 50 miles per gallon. So there are other cars that are get that real high miles per gallon. Look at, if I just save that money every single month for years, I, I'm going to have a lot of extra money in the long run. So hopefully that encourages you buy a cheaper car and or, you know, that gets better gas mileage. All right. That's all I got for buying a car.